Welcome back. Well, Dongyan County has taken another step to reopen the vital crisis triage center. Right? That's right, and this comes as the county continues to work to address a nationwide mental health crisis that leaders say is urgent in that area. Now, since the crisis triage center closed abruptly back in January, I've been digging deeper to find out what's been done since, and here's what I was told. The goal is definitely to get it um, back up and running. The Doniana County Crisis Triage Center has been sitting vacant for months now. Since its sudden closure due to a lack of funding and the ending of its partnership with previous contractor RI International, its future has been in question. I spoke with Health and Human Services Director Jamie Michael about the status of the building as its closure brought concern across the community. What's the newest update? What has changed in the development of possible reopening it again. So since we um, had to close the, the triage center at the end of January, we have been working with a local provider, um, Peak Behavioral. They are interested in operating the crisis triage center with Doniana County. Here's a look at what that contract entails. The startup phase of the partnership, which is expected to last six months, is going to cost the county just over $1,400,000, whereas the estimated amount of what it would cost to operate yearly is just over $2,800,000, of which 50% is expected to be reimbursed through different health programs to include Medicaid. Well, the county commission has the, the burden of making financial decisions. Yes, motion carries. We have a new operator. Thank you. The county commission approving that funding and the contract with New Mexico Psychiatric Hospital Peak Behavioral Health on Tuesday. Because um, Peak already has a hospital, they, they own and operate a hospital in Doniana County and they have for many years. They already have some name recognition. Their um, local staff already has relationships with other providers in the community. So I think it'll be easier for them to step in and learn the business of crisis triage um, and provide this service in our community. The CEO of Peak Behavioral Health addressing the county commission during Tuesday's meeting, saying they're ready to take over. So when this opportunity was presented to us um, January of this year, um, I was able to take that back to our very supportive parent company, Summit Behavioral, who is completely on board with moving forward with this project in a way that will lean less on county funds and really make the business model a sustainable model. I caught up with Commissioner Susana Chaparro about the decision to move forward. We have a lot of underlying problems in the county, but behavioral health is certainly one of them. To have this crisis triage center and have an opportunity for people that are in distress to be able to go to a place where they have their peers and have help and have kindness and have options is something that is it just makes brings me to tears quite frankly. I filed an open records request to dig deeper into the amount of people the center was helping before the closure. The data shows since it opened back in 2021, the center admitted 2,730 people, averaging three to four people a day. Just being totally transparent about the amount of people that you guys were able to assist and whether or not you feel like you were happy with those numbers. So it was difficult to, to forecast because it was the second um, licensed crisis triage center in the state. So a brand new service to our community, a brand new service to our state. So we really didn't have benchmarks to, to measure against. Um, as we started operating, we looked at some of the other facilities that um, came on about the, the same time. And we were seeing just as many or more people in Las Cruces than they were in Albuquerque and Santa Fe. So I think in comparison, when I look locally, we were serving um, an adequate number of folks. With the collaboration between Doniana County and Peak Behavioral Health, there will also be some changes to enhance services. When the crisis center reopens, we will be able to accept both voluntary and involuntary. So we won't have some people going to the crisis triage center and some people still having to go to hospital emergency departments. Everyone will be able to go to the crisis triage center. 
And as county leaders prioritize better police response to those suffering a behavioral health crisis, Chaparro and Michael are both looking forward to not only reduced emergency room cases, but reduced jail visits as well. We are looking forward to the law enforcement portion of it to cooperate fully in getting people treatment instead of incarceration is going to be a big plus for the county. And so, Selena, continuing on with that law enforcement topic, they were utilizing the crisis triage center, but we've previously reported that Sheriff Kim Stewart actually chose not to continue taking people there, right? But what about LCPD? Yeah, so when it comes to Sheriff Kim Stewart, next week here on the K Fox 14 Morning News on Wednesday, I'm going to tell you how the county hopes to change her mind on that. And as far as LCPD goes, I'm going to break down the data that shows the department appeared to be using the center as often as possible in the past. We're going to go ahead and post this story on our website at kfoxtv.com if you want to take another look at it. But let's send things on over to forecaster Hannah Frescas for a look at weather now.